quite serious set in many ways because um, one of the great aspects of justice is ecological now. A poem from I Tulip, my last collection, looks at possible future for England. And it's not that future of the rose or mad map, where everyone gets a double throat. It's a future in which human spirits have survived and sat. And in this poem, there's a young boy who lives in there now in the field. It rains horrendously in England in 2907. Um, it could be for thousands of seconds, but it isn't. But there's a message. In Hayway Street, his uncle, who said he saw a lash of rain snap upward by the star to fight the coming down hell. Another, tending trees from top knot ladder, felt on his back drop, worse than lost to a sack, while wife was foot hard on bottom rung. Yet another, what brown sheep of cloud, a few meters up, sucked back its centre like a spoon in the roasted bean, till it split the jury, and for an hour, all our smoke to cut it. Last it came to me. I said, once I stood in rain, so ferocious, screaming, front and back, down shallow contours, nipples and ravines between half of our met at my pizzle, so I knew how it felt to piss like a rhyme. I said this happened, but they laughed and took out signs and said the hay was dry. One of my guiding lights in composition now is the American school of uh, radical writing, um, improvisatory writing. The Black Mountain School, for example. Um, and I, I could say a great deal about that, I won't. But just to say, you can't have justice in society if our minds are segregated. And one of the problems of ill treatment must be that we think of things as separate rather than connected. That's the contemporary mindset. We're beginning to reconnect things again now, uh, partly through ecological problems and partly through economical problems. Um, this poem as many poems I love to read by other poets, attempts to do several things at once. Attempts to connect different areas we don't normally connect. In this you've got love, ecology and outer space. And they all come together in this one piece. There's a thought behind it, I should say. Um, it's now discredited, but there was a theory many years ago uh, from observing the fetus in the womb that it rehearsed all the stages of evolution up to humanity. It's now being disproved, but I love the idea that we have been all things. And if you've been all things, how can you abuse them? Everyone begins as fish and ends so, spiralling after eggs that other half of our chains and setting gills in gristled knots that bud legs as tadpoles do and blow whole ears halfway down the back, and low-set eye aliens, featherless chick. <coughs> ah, we have peered into that shared ovum, whose blasto flesh runs its gauntlet of fowl and fish, so fused at the tail, nothing can be told apart. Is this why, when I am late, I find in upstairs dark, you, on placenta duvet, and hunched round self as wounded ones are, as though I had just returned from all eternity to catch you naked, out, sleepwalking space, without even navel twisted, purpled rope to hold you. I'm just going to read briefly from the two Annie Farman collections. That means a lot to me at the moment because it's one of the publishers that's just had its funding cut. Um, so it means that books like that may not appear in the future. I'm going to read from both of them in honour of what Annie Farman has done for 40 years. 
And the first poem is about my grandpa in Italy. Um, a man of intense ritual, a very just full man. And he had a cryptic way about him. Um, I remember when I was 10 or 11, he would lean across and say things at dinner. And one time he said, you know, Mario, the blind man is never far from the grave. <laughs> <laughs> but he did this ritual, and I still don't quite understand it, and that's what engenders the poem. And where does justice come into it? There are ways of being in the world that he had that we've lost, in the main we've lost. And we're continuing to lose ways of being in the world. One way of being in the world is through poetry. And we're beginning to lose that. And if we don't have the whole alphabet of experience, how can we have a meaningful culture? How can the sentences be strung together that lead to justice? That's my theory. Wanted to say something about grandfather. How one, one white afternoon under the vine, he stripped a cucumber with his penknife and office. But my lecturer told us, the edifice of consciousness needs a scaffold of knowledge. So my grandfather said nothing. Just walked ahead beneath a bladder rack of figs, whose rinsed greenish light made me gasp for brilliance. Then to a cove of starfish leaves, where he speared some underwater spicule thing, a creature that had, it seemed, never proper sun, and paired it, alive, to near greenness, in hands cured to leather by cigar smoke, the earth. Yet in me still, that bloodless child, winks at the one full-lit dapple finding my face, at his need to shave a rind, stripped by translucent holding its last wet film up to light. That's it. Grandfather, making light of the knowing in his eyes. How he saw in me days broad as a noonlit road where I see only a narrowed path. But he held out this, his grandfather's seed, nerving that flesh, running its length like a glyph through rock. Each time I sliced Watercolour stars, or strike a salad's strange mint coin. Two more pieces. I'll read two pieces from the book Heavy Water, home for Chernobyl. We're very close to the 25th anniversary of what happened in. Belarus and Ukraine in 1986, April the 26th it was. Uh, and now we have, after Windscow, Sellafield, Three Mile, all the rest, we've got another incident. And it occurred to me that justice is not something that's just about the legal system or the way we treat one another. It's also about how we embed ways of doing things in our technological and other social structures. So we set up society to be unjust. And technology is included in that, it's implicated in that. There is such a thing, I, I believe, as an unjust technology. Television would be one of them mm -hmm. for me. Not radio so much, but television, mm -hmm. nuclear power. They're not just in their fabric, in their ideology of how they're created and how they work. And that's what we haven't learned yet. We haven't learned the moral aspects of technology fully. These poems don't go into that. These poems are based on first-hand accounts of what happened in 1986, in the words of the voices who spoke that experience. In a sense, these poems are transcripts, the ones you're about to hear. I'm just going to read two. The first is uh, the wife of a firefighter, one of the men who was sent up onto the roof of the reactor to shovel uh, intensely radioactive graphite, using nothing more than a gloved hand and buckets and so on. And the second piece is a woman recalling falling in love around about the time it happened. And she's still able, in spite of losing the man concerned to radiation, to remember it with gratitude and love. And that's the spirit of justice. Every day 